Not the bitch who showed up late. Hey, here we go. Yeah, we, we, we've, been, we've been waiting for you a lot of times too, boo. I don't know how that, if that's the case, but go on. Ask Mitch. Mitch and I have had many conversations sitting here waiting for your sorry ass. I don't know, Mitch. Do you feel like you and I have ever been sitting here waiting for Monday to show up? Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. Wait, are Mitch, you recording Monday? Let well, let's get you recording before before we get into this. Oh, I'm recording, Mama. And let's do a clap slate on three. One, two, One, three. two, three. Now, Mitch, do you feel like you have ever Mitch, been waiting for Mitch, Monday? Mitch, I remember particularly there was a time that you and I were sitting here and I was like, is this bitch ever going to come? One time. So, so, Mitch, I'm just asking. No, do you it's feel about like, three times. Do you feel like you've ever been sitting here with me and be like, wow, is Monet going to show up or not? Do you feel like this ever happened, Mitch? Like, do you feel like it happened like like today or maybe like maybe the last time we filmed or the last time you're not waiting? What are you talking about, Mitch? Do you, Mitch, is that... you drunk? The last podcast. Well, let Mitch answer. I'm going to stop the... talking and let Mitch answer. How about that, Mitch? Do you, does, that, okay. does that sound familiar to you, Mitch? So at this moment, I tried to get out of this by saying I don't have a microphone. This is true. Mitch doesn't have a microphone. No, Mitch got a microphone. Mitch knows how to edit his voice in. Fuck, Mitch. Do you think that you have ever heard? Do you recall recently you and me be like, wow, is Monet going to show up to this thing or is she like, what's going on? I was caught. So I answered, yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. And uh huh. And Mitch, has there ever been a time when you and I sat here wondering if Bob would ever come? If Bob, his, his boyfriend is here, but Bob is just nowhere to be found. Do you ever feel like that has ever happened to us? That also happened. But also, yeah. Mitch, did, did yeah. Monet also do it the last time we recorded? The, literally the very last time. That is not true. Let Mitch answer. You, Let Mitch answer. So this is the moment I had to be Switzerland. Day before so I I don't remember. I Thank sorry, you. I just don't remember. Mitch, no, he full of shit. Well, first of all, on the, phone, the last because podcast, on the call before this, you, me and Mitch were literally like not two times in a row. Monet being late, but go off, sis. Also, not to mention you, Bob. You make not to mention you. Bob, you're you and your phony, um, this bitch, your phony little. This bitch. No, no, I no, I have the floor. I'm I'm speaking, Mr. <laughs> Vice President. I'm speaking. Um, not to mention... Which you are fully giving First Lady Vice. I don't know what this look is. I said, Bob has matured 40 years since he moved to LA. You what jealous? is this look? And not to mention, um, I went back through uh, the one about black media looking for all these comments of people saying Bob knows nothing about black culture. Literally not one. Literally not one. The only comment I saw was, Bob, you're mixing up two Michael Jackson music videos. You said that there were just and also, so many. And also... Th- and also the Christopher Wallace, uh, Chris, I don't know who you're talking about. You you were calling Tupac Christopher Wallace and the fan or something like that. The I didn't. Like, that Bob, did not. You, you just made yes. that up. I did not call Tupac oh Shakur Christopher Wallace. Not literally Tupac, but you mixed. So so what is it? So what is it? With someone else. Also, I also want to say call one someone, thing. You call Arcea someone. texted me back, and Arcea said I have never used the term a spot. So you said you and your circle, but not. <laughs> Me or Peppermint or or Tamika, and also you said no, it's me, RC, and then this other guy. But then RC was like, not me. So when you say you and your circle, you mean you and one other person whose number you won't give me, so I can confirm whether or not they say this. Because I'm doing the Bob thing, I don't just give people's num- people's numbers out. Well, then can you text them for us and show us the screen grabs? I will text them. So, so I just want to ask you: when you say you and your circle, what you meant was you and this one other person that we don't have access to. No, my friend, Bob, Bob just, this is may RC shock you. not your friend? I have, Bob, Bob hey, this may, oh, your, your, your video just went out. Well, I mean, I know you have another video, but your Skype video just went out. No, I'm still, no. Uh, oh, that's good. Jacob is in here. But God, you said RC, you said Arcia says it. I text RC, RC said, I ain't never said that shit in my life. Arcia, I mean, maybe she hasn't. So uh, my question is, when are you going to acknowledge that you made up a spot being about the uh, I did not make up a spot. We will we will let our fans sign off if they've ever heard of the a spot and it referring to the man's the man's okay, quote unquote. The last thing I'll say about we'll it. The, the fans, last thing I'll say about was this. This was the this was the journey about the a spot. First you said it was Urban Dictionary. We looked it up on Urban Dictionary and it was like actually no. Then you said it was your circle. You said well not Kamika, not you, not Arcia, not Peppermint. When I say me and my circle, I mean me. I did not this- say not Kamika. I did not say not Kamika. I never said not Peppermint either. You did you say. Not I, I said, I said, let me text Kamika. That is not so, true. So, That's so, not true. So can I text Kamika now then? You can text Kamika, yes, if you want. Is she, is she going to confirm the A spot story? I don't know. We should follow. <laughs> Monet, can you just admit that you, 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 this is one that you just, you take the L, Monet. Here, take, here, take, grab it. <laughs> Reach out and grab that L. Right just grab it. It's an L. Just <laughs> oh, you're holding your hand out. <laughs> 
Can you please talk to, talk to us about this cloak and this hair? Well, I'm doing some um, videos for... This is the hair that <laughs> Naomi lent me for... Um, I know. For uh, By Zach Killian. And when we did our thing together, when I wore the dress that I paid for with my own money. Um, and uh -huh. That you stole from me, the, the, the and design. And this Continue. is uh, a cloak that I'm wearing because it's very comfortable. And it's just a poncho. And I wanted to be comfortable for this video. Because you caused me so much discomfort. In <laughs> Why are you in drag? Oh, because I'm going to do... I have to shoot some videos for um, for me in Alaska. No, it's not just me in Alaska. It's a lot of the girls over at PG are doing a big New Year's Eve. All oh, right, show yeah. Guns. And I have like, to do like a little bit of like sketch here and there. Um, and I have to do a video after this. So I was like, and I'm going to do some more cameos. I was going to Which, by do... the way, you are so shady because you joined Cameo. I asked you to use my reference code and you did not. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I, I'll put your stupid reference code, Bob. Jesus Christ. I know that you need the money. So I'll yeah, yeah, I, you, yeah I need. I don't know about you. Maybe you don't need money. I do need money. I'm a person who, <laughs> who uses money in my, literally in my everyday life. I don't know what uh, hippie commune you live on where y'all don't use currency. But over here in Los we don't, Angeles, we use, we, use, we use currency. We use pieces of gum as our currency here in New York City. So y'all all heard it. Monet does not need money. So are you now signing off that I can take all of the Patreon and and we can and, and the YouTube ad sense and you can just do sibling robbery for fun cuz you don't need money? You know what, Bob? I love you so much. I if you need it, I got you, baby. We'll we'll make it work for you. I'll, I I if you need it, I got you. I'm here for you. I want to support you as best as I can. Hashtag #verbal contract Monet. Let me tell you right now. From from the bottom of my heart and all the way down to my A spot. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> how was your day what did you do today what did i do today today oh my god i just there's so many zoom meeting things i literally just lose track of which one happened when but i did like three zoom things today and i also had to go get a new phone today and then i also got food from one of my favorite restaurants in new york city capelli have you ever had capelli is it Italian? No, it's look. Look at Mitch. Mitch is like literally a tear is for me. It's so good. It's like a. It's a. It's a Colombian, I think, or something Latin American. It sounds like a paella. I was thinking like that. Yeah, it's such good food. It's like a twenty four hour spot on Fourteenth Street, and I went, I was down there by the Apple Store down there, or maybe it's Cuban. Yeah, maybe it's Cuban. Yeah, I don't know much about. Um food places i mean I, I don't have a terribly refined palate i usually i mean you, you know this i used to eat um sausage egg and cheese Donald's on a croissant pizza. well i used to eat every day i would eat sausage egg and cheese on a croissant like two or three times a day when i used to live at uh at uh on amsterdam Nine, Avenue. Four, five amsterdam i mean mm -hmm. sausage egg and cheese on a croissant which everyone talks about that's why i know i'm not a new yorker because i didn't do bacon egg and cheese on a bagel i did sausage egg and cheese on a croissant <laughs> Uh, from Chogi. You remember Chogi? I remember Chogi. Also, that's that, that that's that shit that you just hear. That's not true. New Yorkers eat bacon egg and cheese on a on a on a roll. That's that, oh, that's on a, a roll. Is that what it was? No. Yeah, sorry. I'm not I'm not a New Yorker. Yeah. But I but I did love there's this one girl on, online because there was a thing like uh show me you're from New York without saying I'm from New York and then it cut to this black girl, she was like, Yo, stop it. Stop with all this fucking bacon, egg, and cheese shit. That's not what the fuck New York is. You're not from New York. You moved here two years ago from Iowa, and then you got your ass kicked by the city. So that's what's happened when you moved to the city. You moved to New York City. It beats the fuck out of you. It steals your money. And you be broke as fuck. I that's saw that. That's what the fuck New York City is. And I was like, honestly, that is what. <laughs> that is. What it, it really is. is. Um, and there's just so many people, and we. I think we talked about this in the podcast before, but like during the pandemic, like so many people were leaving the city. Lots of people, like, in their fucking, like, really nice apartments up on the Upper West Side or whatever. They're like, New York City is dead. I'm leaving. I'm like, New York City is not dead. Yeah, Megan We're McCain. Literally... Megan McCain was like, my home is a, is a hellscape. What she say? What she said? Yeah. My neighborhood looks like a tw third a world war country. zone. A war zone. A war zone. And her neighbor was like, yeah. um, actually. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, millions of people here are still living, are still thriving. So if you if, if it's dead for you, you little hell's kitchen gay, bye. Bon voyage. Get out of here, bitch. Like, we don't need you. I mean, this is... Uh, uh, interesting for someone who just recently moved to LA, but I will say that when I lived in New York City for the bulk of the pandemic, I lived there until October. Um, it, 
I, I did not experience this deadness that people were talking about. I remember when you, when you go outside, there were a lot of people going on social distance walks. Some people not going on social distance walks. Like when you went to the park that one day, and everyone was just French kissing on the uh, oh. in Central Park, in Central Park, breathing in each other's mouths and shit. But um, other than that, I mean, I I New York City will always be um, home for me. It's like about Atlanta yeah. too. Like now that I like now that I, like I mean, I have not lived in Atlanta for almost. Oh my god, I haven't lived in Atlanta since two thousand four. So I've not lived in Atlanta for 16 years now, but it's still my home. Oh my God, you're so old, Bob. Ew. <laughs> oh, you nigga, you right around the corner. If if if, if I'm if I'm <laughs> bending the corner, bitch, your ass is right down the block, Miss Thing. If I'm, if I'm on 16th Street, you're on uh 15. Okay. You, you know how the one train goes between 14 and 18th Street? I always thought that was the weirdest thing that the one train. <laughs> No, it, oh, because back in the day there used to be um, a hospital there. I, yeah, I remember. I remember when I moved to New York City, that hospital was there, and now it's the fucking condos, yeah. which is so crazy. I always wanted to. I mean, I can't do it. Someone who's really fast should do it. But like, get off the train at 18th Street and run and try to get back on the train at 14th Street. Oh no, nigga, you should do it because that would be comedy. <laughs> and let's see you do it, bitch. <laughs> you should do it. That shit will be, that will be a viral clip. Yo ass. <laughs> what the fuck you kiki and cuckoo on about over there? <laughs> I just get you're giving me very deaconess Juanita Bynum. Do you, do you, do you know do you know who um Juanita Bynum is? A gospel singer. No, she's a a pastor who had some a very uh, uh little checkered past. But you look like a. Fitting image of Juanita Bynum right now. Juanita, no, I don't know a lot about the church people. I mean, I know about the Atlanta church scene, like Creflo Dollar. She's from. I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure she's from Atlanta. All the black deacons. All the, the You remember Creflo Dollar? Oh, girl. I mean, you mean you mean um, Creflo Creflo steal your dollars? Creflo, girl. Creflo steal your dollars, girl. <laughs> girl. You look like Juanita Bynum down. I'm like, oh God, is she? Is I about to prophesy? I'm like, he ya ha ya on tonight. <laughs> and you. You look like Juanita. Bynum. I do not look like Juanita. Yes, so you do. <laughs> She's gorgeous. Listen, I went back and listened to. If anyone who is uh, just tuning into our podcast recently, I really strongly encourage you to go back and listen to the episode about black media. I went to listen to it today because of what you said. I was like, let me listen to these things. But girl, when it got to that part where you did that fucking book report at the end, one day it's it's legit. One of the funniest things that's ever been on this. <laughs> Oh this podcast this you're, shit. you're so ridiculous also I'm gonna listen to it again because I remember being annoyed because you just made up this you made up this whole thing I was like just reading it like I would no. anything else I did not sound like a book report you just did a thing and then it became a uh, thing I, <laughs> my in, name is Monet Exchange <laughs> <laughs> we had so much fun doing this report. I when you were in school, did you do like were you the kid who actually did a lot of the work? Or were you the one who never put in work? Were you somewhere in the middle? In no, I was challenges. always like it, group, I was. I'm in, so fucking drag race, all, not group challenges and group projects. <laughs> um, um, I was, I was, I would always be somewhere in the middle because there would always be someone who didn't do a lot of work. And I'm like, motherfucker, if you think I'm about to be doing all the work and you're about to get this passing grade, A, if that's the case, I'll, I'm the bitch. I would have told a teacher on you. I would, but I mean, I, but I would not do it in front of everybody. I'll do it in secret. Snitch I'll be, asshole, I'll, old I'll like, snitch. After, after class, I'd be like, um, Miss Bynum, I'm just so you know, um, Mitch, she only started like texting us back on like the last day, and um, and like me and um, Jacob, we did like all the work, and Mitch didn't really do nothing towards the end. Just like just so you just so you know, that'll be me. <laughs> I, I was that's not fair. I was the one. I was very this this. What I'm about to say may really shock you. I was very confrontational. So whenever someone, <laughs> so whenever someone didn't, I was very interested in like dragging it out in a public fashion in front of the other group members being like, we want to know why you not <laughs> pulling your weight, Mary. We all have to Oh, my God. Something. Oh, oh, oh. Now that so many years passed, can you please tell me the who was it, who it was on season eight? Who did what? Okay, so just for the for the for the podcast listeners, so back in the day when Baba just when after season eight was announced and it was premiered, they did this like 
tour. Like they went to like different cities on this tour. Mm-hmm. And then when they got to San Francisco, oh God, we, we were the last wanted, city. We were the last season to do a promo tour. Yeah. yeah. And when they got to San Francisco, they wanted the girls to drive down from San Francisco to LA in drag on the bus. Full fucking and Bob drag. was like, hell no, we won't go. So, you know, again, this may shock you, but Bob is not a confrontational person. So, this was when he told me, I was like, this is crazy. This doesn't even sound like you. But Bob was <laughs> go to the go to the promoters and be like, we're not doing this. Like, none of the girls want to do it. But Bob was the only one speaking up, and none of the other girls were. Um, were but you you wouldn't you would not tell me who it was. So what happened was I drafted an email and sent it to all the girls and I said, <laughs> "Listen, we're oh all." Oh my god, you are a black Karen. You are an Agatha. I said we're all going to send this email because they were nervous because all the girls were like we don't want to do it. And I was like, I know you don't want to do it, but they were afraid to speak up. And I said, well, if all of us, I'm, no, this is not black Karen, bitch. This is fucking this is civil rights shit, girl. Uh, this is union. I was unionizing these hoes. So I was like, if we all send the email at the exact Bob same time. Bob is the sojourner truth of our time. I said, if we all send the email at the same time, then they can't get mad. It'll be all of us. And all of us agreed to send the email. <laughs> Sorry, my earbud fell out of my ear. If all of us oh, agreed if all of us agreed to send the email at the same time, then who can get mad at? But there were two right. girls who didn't want to send the email. Um, who? I'll, tell I'll tell you, me. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. So we got it. So we, we all sent the email, except these two girls. I'll tell you who. <laughs> We we all sent the email and um and then we then I also called a meeting. I said we would like to meet you in the lobby twenty minutes before we're supposed to leave. We want to talk about this. <laughs> so we got down there and the only girl who was speaking up with me, only two girls were Acid Betty and um Cynthia Lee Fontaine. Cynthia Lee Fontaine was like, No, baby, I don't want to do this. And Betty was like, Absolutely not. And everyone else was sitting there all quiet. And then the bus over, it's so funny because I had this big afro on. I, I was dressed like Angela Davis. I was wearing this red leather look with this big afro. And I was like, we need to stand up for ourselves. But then Derek Barry was like, really, Derek? There were who two is girls. He, who Derek? Derek was like, I think it's fun. Honestly, I'll because when we were all saying no, Derek goes, I'll do it. I'll get dressed as Britney. They can all be my backup dancers. And I said, what? Well, <laughs> I said, have you googled how long the drive from um from San Francisco to Los Angeles is? And they want us to do it on a uh-huh. bus. Like, we're, we're going to be hunched over. It's going to be horrible. And then the other girl was Chi-Chi. Chi-Chi Devane, rest in peace, didn't really? want to do it. Chi-Chi said, girl, they ain't eliminate me yet. I ain't about to get them no reason to eliminate me, girl. <laughs> so those were the two. All right, we, we should take a break. <laughs> and we're back. Um, I'm very shocked. Oh, wait. No, oh, really quick. I want to say, of course, Acid. Bitch, we were on Work the World, and they... Didn't, they didn't do something. I feel it was something very small. It was like, we had requested, I think, like, uh, um, the runner, the runner for the venue was supposed to get hairspray. If you know what a runner is, a runner is one person whose job it is to literally just go get you stuff. It's like one person yeah. that's there. That's their main job is to leave the theater because we can't leave the theater because we're, we're in half drag, we're naked, we're yeah. rehearsing, getting dressed as a person. Afraid. Yeah, naked and afraid. Uh, <laughs> Um, and the, and they didn't get the hairspray for whatever reason, or or or, or they got the wrong hairspray. Bitch, Acid was about to start. She was literally about to start a civil rights movement about this fucking <laughs> hairspray. She was rallying of all of the girls. We were gonna walk away. I was like, Acid, it is just hairspray. I said, We will get through this. We it will is the not be moved. <laughs> That's the hair. With the hairspray, the hair won't be moved because it got hairspray in it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. So, Bob, today we're talking about fame. The fame Oh, my God. You I had a perfect uh, segue. You ready? Hold on. Go back. Let's 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 act like... Don't actually go back and editing. Okay. We're okay. gonna... We will not, not be... I, I guess, like, honestly, that's how I, when I... Like, when I was on that bus, I was, like, trying to stand up for our stuff, I felt like going into Drag Race was, like, my venture, my true venture into fame and, like, being a famous yes. person. Mm-hmm. It was. That was... <laughs> that was good. It was. That was good. That that brought you into the spotlight. Did you, my, think, did you think that this would that this was going to be how you got to fame? Or did you think it was going to happen another way? I mean, depending on what time in my life you asked me. I mean, if you asked me 2010, I'd say, yeah, that makes sense. If you asked me 2004, I'd be like, absolutely not. I always thought I'd be uh, out of drag stand-up comedian. That's what I thought. Or or um, got it. Or some sort of like a, a lesser-known Broadway actor who does like straight plays. <laughs> So you were prepared to do the, which a lot of um, comedian actors do, is they do the the same comedy thing, then they end up going to like 
the Upright Citizens Brigade or the Gotham, whatever. Well, and, Upright is, okay, that's like, two different things. The, upright Citizens Brigade is for improv actors. So this people who end up on SNL, people like people right. on Mad TV, and Gotham is for stand up comedy. It's people like John Mulaney, Chris Rock. Uh, so if you're a stand up comedian, you'd go to uh, Gotham, and if you are a improv an improv actor, you'd end up at Upright Citizens Brigade. Well, no, because somebody like Kristen Wiig did comp did stand up before she went to Upright, and she just did it. I mean, there there's crossover. There there are stand up. That's what I'm saying. So I, I was saying like, which, but Kristen Wiig was, was that Kristen the... Wiig was really big in the improv world, like in the comedic act. Because mm. Upright Syndicate is not just improv. They also do like they have like uh, they write plays. They're the 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 companies there write plays and, and put them on. Uh, so there's there's a lot going on at Upright Citizens. <laughs> I was saying, so, so the director, were you prepared to do one of those things and just do that realm? Were you just, or yeah, I, mean, I remember going to, go to, to the Broadway. Upright Citizens Brigade, and because there's a long, there's a long line because the shows are there's like one show a week that's free. It's completely free. You just go and the show's free, and it's really hard to get into because it's free. I remember going and seeing like friends from college who I don't even talk to anymore, but like this girl from college was there. I think her name was April. I can't remember. Anyway, um, she was like, "Come meet me there." So I came to meet her. But I was like, hey, they were in line. And then she was like, oh, you can't um, you can't join us. Just cut the line. She, she's, like, she's like, oh, it's good to see you. Can't, you can't join us, though. You have to go back there. And that's the ca- the shot where the, where the camera pans out and the line is all the way to <laughs> fucking New Jersey. And I was like, oh. And then so all my college – but they also didn't tell me when to get there. They, I didn't know about this whole get there early thing. So I was waiting at the very Got back it. of the line. By myself, dejected, trying to get into a fucking upright sitting brigade show that I barely in drag. And that was in, in my drag. mind. I don't think it was even in my in my in my. You're in full drag with long nails. You also have the highest heels you've ever owned. Well, I need to buy them. Praying for everybody in, in line. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, that's what I thought my um, path would be. Here's a question for you: Are you famous? It's I don't weird, think right? I'm famous. I don't think I'm famous. I know I am. Famous to some. I mean, let's look up the definition. Your favorite pastime. <laughs> I think. I think by definition we are well, famous. Jake is making a face. Wait, 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 face. We have done had this exact conversation. What we're having it again. All right. I mean, the question. I mean, we're talking about fame. This is the, the topic. So my question is, in, in my in my opinion, I've I've thought about this a lot. I've really thought about this a lot. I think we're famous. I think we're famous. I think we're famous too. It, it feels weird to say it. It feels like some like self proclamation, like "Oh, we're famous, honey," but we are. I mean, we are famous. Yeah, we are. I don't think we're. I don't. One I don't us, think that we're able. One of us more so than the other. That is true. I agree with you. That is very true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Okay, what tier? All right, calm down, Juanita. If 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 uh, what what tier are we? There there is famously. Kathy Griffin had a show called oh, D-List. Oh, the, the D-List. My Life on the D-List. So my so question good. is... The, the, my Life on the D-List was such a great fucking show. Oh my God, it was so good. Do you remember when she got kicked out of the Apollo Theater? Yes. For saying pussy? Every- for saying this one <laughs> mouthful like a pussy? <laughs> um, um, what, wait, I think what's your we're like, bitch, we're like, Wait, wait, we have, to defi- we have to define who is an A-list celebrity. Who is? Beyonce. Beyonce. Obama's. Uh, lots of... Po- oh, a- Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Uh, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa! You think AOC is an A list celebrity? Absolutely. I think she's a B list. I think if if Beyonce is A list, I think AOC is B list. I disagree. I judge. I judge that nowadays, not just like your like what you've got. Like you know, like obviously Beyonce is Beyonce. Beyonce has Grammys, and I think she may have been. She does have a Emmy for Dream Girls. I don't know. Beyonce has lots of accolades and like critical acclaim for her stuff. That's one thing. But nowadays, also, I look at social media engagement with along with like how that interacts with the thing. Like a- AOC posts something on Twitter, and immediately, I mean, it has upwards of five hundred thousand likes sometimes, and just like a single post. I which think is in terms of her contemporaries, like uh, other politicians, I think there are a, a large. I, I think in terms of the politicians who are a list politicians, I would say the Obamas, the Trumps, the Clintons, um, Warren, Sanders. Um, Pelosi, those are like A-list yeah. politicians. Bernie. Yeah. And I think that AOC is, I mean, she's very fucking famous. I mean, she's very famous. That's like undeniable. You know what I mean? 
She has yeah. eight. She has eight million Instagram followers. And let's see, Senator, she, has, she has 10.9 Twitter followers. Senator Bernie Sanders has, oh, Senator Sanders only has 6 million? That is crazy. The AOC is, the, bitch, she did a video the other day explaining the the um, the um COVID vaccine because there are so many, you know, misconceptions about it. And it was, like, so good. And anyway, we I've, I've fucking talked about AOC ad, ad nauseum on this podcast. She's great. Um, so, Beyonce, so, so they're, they're A-list. All right. Gaga. Who, who is... Who are celebrities that are in our reign? Not Drag Race Girls. Not mention Drag Race Who are celebrities that are just as famous as us? I would say people like um, Alex Newell. I would say right. um, Karamo. I would... S- no. No. You think Karamo's more famous than I us? I think Karamo... Absolutely. But also, what what is that based on, though? His engagement, um, with what the things that he's done. Karamo is on... I know Drag Race is worldwide... But also, uh, we're I was literally about to call it we're queer. Um, queer eye is also super far reaching. Oh wait, and um, I think that queer eye is a huge show on also, Netflix. Also, to everyone, world. sorry for looking down at my phone a lot. I'm just trying to like. Uh, oh, what, what we can do, what do what we can do, guys? We can like screen record our phones and we can put that footage in on the screen. I think which which would be cool, honestly. Okay, you want, you want to do that? Do you do you know do you know how to screen record, Bob? Yes, I mean, but I'm also using okay, my that iPad. Wasn't, that wasn't the dig. I'm just asking. Some people don't know, baby. I'm just asking, honey. Okay, let me hope my yeah. You just drag down from the corner. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Karama, let's see how Karama. Karama has two point nine million followers. I can't drag down from the corner. There. Oh. But also, Karamo gets very big engagement. And, and, and Karamo's past three pictures, one has 235,000 likes. The next one has 154,000 likes. The, the, the views on the next video after that has 456,000 views. So Karamo gets very big engagement from his stuff. And he's also on a huge fucking TV show. Okay, maybe I don't know how to screen record. Listen, don't you drag <laughs> down from the top right corner? I've done it in the past. You drag down from the top right corner, right? Oh, never mind. I got it. Boom. It's done. <laughs> it was, I was having a nails problem while you're talking. Okay, fast the bottom. I was having a nail problem. But yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, so Cremo definitely gets hired. But there's also drag race girls who get higher engagement than us, and I think that we're similar to. Oh, that, yeah, that's... That- that's true. That's true. Who else? Also, Karamo, Alex. You know, so, so can we? I mean, I, Karamo is a I little think, bit more famous than us. Yeah, Alex? Karamo's a little more famous. But I also think that we have higher engagement than Alex Newell. But then also, like the Tonys, and I mean, the, the, the Tony. Sorry, the Broadway credit, and also being yeah. on two seasons of a network television show. True. Like that's a thing. Okay, who else? Well, I'm curious to think who else because I really, I really can't think. Well, I don't know who else would be in I mean, on, I, like Miley Cyrus. No, Monet, Miley Cyrus is way more. <laughs> I'm famous. kidding. I'm oh, kidding. I'm I was kidding. like, bitch, girl, not even close. Bitch, Hannah Mon- Mon fucking Tana. Also, Miley Cyrus's newest, latest project is so fucking good. Miley Cyrus has such a great instrument, a great voice, and she's like channeling this like '80s thing. It is, it's so good. Work, Miley. Yeah, Miley's amazing. I mean, so, okay, so that being said, what level celebrity are we? <laughs> I we're definitely D list, or I, I I think that we're D list. I, I think that we're DC. We're no, we're definitely not C. We're like D plus list. You know, I'll take that. I think we are D plus list celebrities. Um, <laughs> what? Why <are> you laughing? <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's just so funny. It's like, yeah, fame is such a weird thing. Um, I mean, I, you so, and I, I can, I, I, okay, I mean, okay, here's someone, I think, yeah, Mitch is asking a question. Okay, so Mitch is asking, in, in terms of gay celebrities, where do we rank? I think that we're definitely gamers, and I think we're like B-list gay, gamers. I mean, B, if, well, B-A. I would say C-list gay. If you if, if the top gay celebrities are Ellen DeGeneres, uh... Uh, who's the 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 British guy? Sir, sir, uh, sir, sir, Ian McKellen. No, the Brit- Ian, yeah, Ian, Ian McKellen, uh, Ellen DeGeneres, RuPaul, Andre Charles, um, <laughs> Billy, Bitch, I, Billy we're Porter. B, we're we're B minus. Yeah, gay people. I feel we're B. We're B gay. We're B. We be gay. We be gay. We be gay. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I, I can, I, I think we, we do rank high. I would say at the top of, if we are D list, I think the very top of the D list celebrities, in my opinion, is probably like um, Trixie Mattel. Ellen, Ellen is the big. No, oh, oh, yeah. like, oh, you mean like drag race? The top, no, the top of D list celebrities for us, for people like our colleagues, I would say Trixie Mattel, Todrick Hall. Um, uh, hey, see, I would put I would place Trixie and Todrick outside of it. I feel like sick Trixie and Todrick are definitely C list. Yeah, and what, then what about James? Where's James Charles? James Charles. Oh, yeah, that's weird. Where's Jeffrey Star? I, mean, I, I think if Jeffrey Star is Jeffrey Star is a C list celebrity, and I don't think that Tr- no James Charles is way more famous than Jeffrey Star. Now. I think James. I think James Charles is a C list celebrity too. Yeah. Maybe maybe B minus. I mean, anyway, this is a, a, a weird tier system. But what I'm saying is, James Charles is a very famous person, but he's not an A list celebrity. Yeah. This is true. This is true. You're right. So you so so yes, yeah, so I think celebrity involves accolades as well as reach, right? Yeah, I would say so. Accolades, reach, accomplishments. I mean, in, in theory, famous is just how well people know you. Now here's a question. How famous do you want to Wait, be? Wait, talk. You want to Keep be? on talking. I gotta get my. I, I, I gotta get my charger, girl. Not that big old brown round popping around town. We're gonna take, we're gonna take a break here. All right, listen. While, while when they grab the charger, we're gonna take a little break. Ah, uh-uh, don't that break it on me. But now we take a break. No, now we're taking a break. We're back. Okay, never mind. We're back. How about eat a burrito, bitch? Um. Okay. okay so really quick, can I sit? Can I talk about something really quick? I off the record. So no, on the off. Oh, we can we're talk back. On the record, we're back. Got it. Um, the fans get, like, when you and I talk, when, when you have now told the fans that I'm abusive to my cats, now literally all the comments are like, Monet, you are da 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 I was and just Bobby reporting Bobby, what I was seeing. Bobby, no one he'd be doing, he'd say shit like that. Anyway, but today, she, so I have my RuPaul, my uh, Marquette from Losing Season 10, the like, tweeter in my head. bathroom. In yeah, my tweeter head. But it's called, it's also called a Marquette. Um, I put it in my bathroom because I heard that putting, like, your accolades, I guess it is an accolade, in your bathroom was a sign of, like, humble, hum, humbility. Um, anyway, Colleen climbed on the counter in the bathroom and pushed it off the thing. And RuPaul's fucking arm snapped off, and it's right here in my hand. When? <laughs> no, that's all Colleen is such Win. a monster. And he's, I'm, I'm missing fingers now. It is too much. RuPaul throwing up gang signs and shit? That is hilarious. <laughs> Hey, what it do? It's your boy RuPaul coming at you once again from World of Wonder Studios. Um, so speaking of James Charles and those kind of celebrities, do you feel like? Because I feel like people are constantly coming for them and trying to make that like like they want to see them fail. Do you feel like? Do you feel like people are, are, are like that for you? Um, no. To be honest, no. I don't think there's a lot of people there who want to see me fail. I feel like people want to see James Charles fail are people who are on like on this like in close levels to him. People like. Like Tati and um, Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson, who are all like in that same tier of internet celebrities, and it's I don't listen. I didn't follow it super close, but it seemed like they were just jealous of James. Who is Charles. rustling with paper? Oh, over there. Uh, Zach is eating burritos in the in the. Um, we uh, got Taco Bell. We got Taco oh, Bell. Stella, sorry. Um, okay. Um, do they have a grilled cheese burrito? I think so, yeah. I think oh, my God. Yeah. Monet, mind your business, bitch. Mind your little weight loss business, okay? <laughs> I'm on a fatness journey. Um, but I think that, like, <laughs> it seemed like there was some sense of jealousy from the people who saw James Charles rising and were like, we, we can't have this. Also, I don't know. I was not there. I was not in Jeffree Star's head. But I know from the people on the internet, what they were saying, there was, but I don't have people trying to, are people trying, are people trying to take you down? I don't think so. I mean, I do feel like there is this thing with famous people and, like, celebrities that people love to cancel, like, because cancel culture is such, like, sorry to say, but, like, in vogue now. So, like, people, like, love to try to cancel people. That's what I feel like. And seeing, like, I I honestly feel some people get off by seeing celebrities get canceled. They're like, good. Well, that person was, was, like, doing all this stuff. I have a theory about it. I have a theory about it. So, let's talk about R. Kelly, right? Uh Uh-huh. I think a reason why people want to see R. Kelly get canceled is because when R. Kelly is, when his image is besmirched, when it is like blemished, you know what I mean? When there, when there, sorry, when there's a blemish on his public image, 
anything in your life that is tied to R. Kelly also has a blemish on it. So if you dance to step in the name of love at your wedding, you had a groomer and a pedophile singing the song that everyone danced to at your wedding. And there's a sense of anger and like, I have to get something back because he took something from me. I mean, this is just a theory that I have. So I feel like sometimes that people really supported James Charles and loved James Charles and thought he was great. And then they found that James Charles was like grooming straight guys, which is, by the way, not a thing. Just so we're clear, the whole grooming straight guys, being that's not a thing, all right? Um, then they're like, every time I bought his makeup palette, then I contribute to that. So they want to see someone go down for that reason. That's my theory. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, think about um, when, how you felt when you when you danced to Michael Jackson when you were young, and then you heard the Michael Jackson. You mean R. Kelly? Michael Jackson. I'm switching to Michael Jackson now. How you if you danced to Michael Jackson when you were young, and then you heard things that were less than savory about Michael Jackson. All those memories you have. Bill Cosby watching fucking uh, Fat Albert. I don't have, see. I don't know. I don't have any of those things. You didn't listen to Michael Jackson growing up? No. I was born in 1990. I was like, I was listening to fucking, I, I bitch, I, it, it, did he sing the fucking Barney theme song? I love you, you love I mean, me. I mean, you realize That's that Michael was Jackson was to. huge in the 90s. You remember Michael Jackson saying? Yeah, but I was young. I was young. It wasn't something I was listening to. As a I'm not like 50, Monet. Let's just get that out of the out of the way. I'm not 50 years but old. But Bob, that three years is different. So Four years. So, uh, and like, the, Four exactly four <laughs> years. That four years is, is is very listening to very different things in those four years. I just remember Michael Jackson saying, but that, da, 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 da. You don't remember that at all. I could I could even tell you what song that is. Mitch, what you is, remember that, don't that? you, Mitch? Oh, that was huge. It was remember the time. Michael Jackson saying, remember. Now, now let me tell you. Now, if like people like, and, and I've said it. I, I was very obsessed with like white fucking pop stars. Like, I love Christina Aguilar. I love Britney Spears. You if love Michael Jackson. Them, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> if I heard them about them, like maybe that would tarnish like childhood memories for me. But no, no one, no one who has been convicted or or, or proven that they did anything wrong. Like I, we kind of listened to R. Kelly in my house, but like not really. So I don't really feel. We loved R. Kelly in my house. I mean, we really yeah. Listen to my okay. brother. Did. Let me say. Let me say that my my brother did. But again, we were in like a. I was just too young. It wasn't like my thing yet. I sang. I believe I can fly at my school's talent show. I sang. Believe I can fly too. Yeah, that's an R. Kelly song. He wrote that one. Wait, you sang. You you like you sang like a solo. Yes, bitch. No, you did not. You're lying. You're lying. You're fucking lying. Yes, I did. You're honey. a liar. I believe I can fly. Not- I believe I can touch the sky. <laughs> Okay. I believe that you wasn't hitting them fucking notes. That's what I believe. Well, I nailed it, first of all. Um, <laughs> Why you over there talking, honey? I, I also, when I, when I was in uh, elementary school in, in Mississippi, um, the the guy who played the kid from Forrest Gump, young Forrest Gump, went to my school. I've never seen Forrest Gump. What? Okay, we got to move on. Listen, here's a question. <laughs> How famous do you want to be? Like, do you want to be Beyonce famous? I mean, yeah, I would love to be Beyonce famous. You really want that? But that comes with so much. Like, I was so someone that we, Bob and I, both know and work with works works with Beyonce periodically, and they worked with them during the pandemic. And just saying, like, Ooh. to get to Beyonce, uh, well, we, we can we, we can believe it because um, I don't know if he wants if. The, oh yeah, yeah. Tailored all of the all of her Adidas Ivy Park stuff. So t- so not like, just that, like ta- like, a- like he tailors all like she'll they just buy clothes and they all have to be tailored. She does not wear stuff off the rack. It's can just- we say this on the podcast? I don't know if we can say this. We just leave the name. Yeah, just leave the name. But, but okay. <laughs> um, so t- so Beyonce. They fucking picked. They fucking picked this person up in like a huge Mercedes, not like a truck, not a bus, a Mercedes van. I mean, not 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 a, not a not a bus. I mean, not a, a van, not a car, a bus, like a mini bus. They brought you all the way out to the Hamptons. When you get to the Hamptons, it's this huge estate. They put you in one garage where they check you for your temperature and for COVID. There, they take you to another garage to check you a second time. Then a third garage. This is a third garage on a fucking estate. Then they let you in to see the Queen, and then uh, it, it, it's just like 
Like the fact that like, but he also she so she has three assistants and like they're all running around like if that like I just I just can't imagine like they're like literally nine people working just for the fitting, just for her to fit some clothes. Like that's crazy. I mean, imagine what a tour is like. That's literally our. That's more people than we have on our tour. That includes right. the dancers, the DJs, the merch people, the fucking promoter, <laughs> us. <laughs> that is insane. But you want that? I would. I really would. That, I don't that sounds think, so fancy. To be honest, I don't think I want to be any more famous than James Charles is right now. Any more than that would be too much. It'd be too much. Really? Why do you think it's too much? I mean, the idea of, like, do you remember when you and I were leaving Hello Dolly because I bought the wrong tickets, and then we were trying to rush to the car, but we kept getting stopped. We got stopped, like, two or three times and went to the car. Yeah. And at one point, you just acted like you weren't you because it was too much. But that's everywhere. What I love about being gay famous is if we have a show, we can sell thousands of tickets in one theater or one venue, and then if we go one block over, people will be like, hey, can I help you? <laughs> but all the people like it, it's like it's like drag con it, the further you get from drag con the more your self esteem just goes down and down and down because that drag con you can't even walk it's insane ah, it's fine it's yeah. fine it's funny and that is and that is Beyonce and Lady Gaga everywhere. and Rihanna that's them all the time everywhere they go that does not that doesn't sound good to me yeah now you say that I'm like yeah that sounds crazy like, like what is it about fame that's so appealing to you um, not just fame. I just feel like it's it's not fame that's appealing to me. It's uh, it's the and I, and again, I don't like to hear it all the time. But seeing like getting like going through your DMs and people saying like you really don't understand like you doing that fake out split like that literally like changed me like that changed my life. I'm like that's so crazy that me doing a dance move can impact someone's whole life that way. To well, me, that, is it crazy? I mean, and, and I like can you imagine like how much this changed people's lives. And if you're if you're not um, if you don't subscribe to our Patreon, you don't know what it is I'm doing right now. But it is one of the <laughs> biggest dance moves of the last twenty years for sure. Whoa! I'm gonna, I was gonna give you all that hint. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, this is massive. Like, if you there is nowhere in the world you can't do this, and people won't know what you're doing. Everyone knows this. I I, I think I think we're aging out of it a little bit. I feel like if you did that to like a Gen Zer, there would they maybe would possibly probably know, but most but maybe they won't. I'll ask my nephew. Whereas, and my niece. by the way, my niece just uh, followed me on TikTok, and I follow her. So now I'm following this random, not random. She's my niece, but like for everyone else, this <laughs> random eleven year old girl. <laughs> So I'll be scrolling through my page, and then my niece pops up, and she's eleven, and she's like, she's like, TikTok, I bet you, I bet you, she fucking TikToking better than you. She probably, okay. My also, then she, then she showed her friend my TikTok, and then her friend was like, "Can you tell your uncle to follow me?" And I was like, I'm not following your friend. I'm not I'm not about to have a bunch of here's fucking the, 10 and 11 year olds on my page. Here's, here's the thing about fame. Don't you like, do you get private? Do you get like, like really guarded about your social media? Like, for example, when someone, some fucking random ass person is like, can you follow me too? And like, they wait to see if you follow them, if they follow you back. I feel like well, that's a thing of fame. Well, there's two things. I mean, I, I don't put my social media on my, on my grinder or my hookup stuff because people, I mean, it's my face. People know who I am. Like, that's off bat. People already know who I am. If they know. If you know, you know. One of those things, right? But uh, but when you're at a party with someone and they don't know who you are, and you, you they ask your Instagram, you bring it up, they're like, why, why do you have over a million Instagram followers? And then I'm like, oh, you don't know me, and I have to explain. My, like, I remember being on the street corner, this guy came up to me and was like, oh, my God, Bob, I love you. Can I have a picture? I was like, sure. I took a picture, and then, the per- and then they walked away, and the person next to me was like, should I know you? And I was like, no. I hate that. No. Oh, I hate that. Oh, when you were somewhere and like people like, and then someone recognized you and, and, and they take a picture and then, and then like more people come and do it. Then you always, without a shadow of a doubt, for me, it's always like a middle age or older, like 52 year old white dude with white hair coming up for a picture to him. Like, man, I don't know. I don't know who you are, but I guess we should take a picture. And I'm like, bitch, what are you And doing? they're like, who Girl. are you? And I'm like, nigga, who the fuck are you? <laughs> Or this thing, my fucking family, well, my aunt particularly, she loves to do this. I will go out, and we, for, Jacob's Pickle, prime example. We're at Jacob's Pickle, and we're sitting on there, 
And then, like, the waiter is trying to play cool. And they're like, oh, my God, Monet, I love you, whatever. And she always goes, take a picture, take a picture. And I'm like, he didn't say he wants a picture. Oh, that's he probably so doesn't want a fucking annoying. Picture. There's it, nothing worse it's than so me. It's so annoying. When you're with someone, like, do you want a picture? Get a picture. <laughs> Just cozy up. <laughs> Grab a spoonful of the spaghetti. <laughs> I'm like, what? Are they always fucking doing this? Okay, so my, my uncle Steve, um, like this my uncle Steve told this this lady that he knows who has like a southern ice cream company. It's like some southern ice cream company, right? And uh-huh. then he passed her her information, my information. You know me, I I don't I don't give out anyone's phone number without asking them first. You don't. You don't. This is true. Uncle Steve does not follow that policy. So I I get a random text from this lady being like I want you to invest in my ice cream company. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry, what? She goes, I would like for you to invest in my ice cream company. I have a, I mean, first of all, I was like, this, this, honestly, this all sounds great. Like the, the concept is like a Southern, it's a, it's owned by a, like a, a black woman in the South. Y'all should go check. If I figure out the name, I'll, I'll tell y'all to go check it out. It's, it, did you play like pecan pie, ice cream, and you know, all that sweet potato pie ice cream. Um, but I was like, not you just calling me out of the blue being like, give me money for my <laughs> ice cream business. And then, and, and then when I was like, I don't, when I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know that, that, that this is the, the, the time for me to be investing in business. She was like, all right, can you put me in contact with RuPaul? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye nigga. T- give me RuPaul number. <laughs> Uh, Bob, invest in that woman's company. And if don't RuPaul would have said no, she'd be like, all right, RuPaul, thank you. Fuck you, nigga. Give me Ellen's number. I want Ellen's number right now. She's going to get to the <laughs> Obama. Like, if, no. if it's the last, she's going to get to the Obama. I'm literally about to say, but Ellen's going to finish it. All right, bitch, bye. Um, you, you got you got um Barack number? <laughs> but, text me his number. Honestly, the like, go off. <laughs> Honestly, for real. You know what? That's another thing about like so. You know, they're like, have you ever ever wanted to work with another celebrity, and you and you have other people people in your life just be like, oh yeah, just just, just send them a message. I'm like, yeah, just because I'm have a blue check and they have a blue check in their family doesn't mean they're gonna answer and read or want to do whatever I'm asking. Money like, celebrities whose numbers I have, I'd be scared to text and call them. Exactly, and people don't get that, and particularly of uh, a, a friend of that we both have uh, for. They love to be like, well, just text them and ask them. I'm like, what do you mean? Who's, That's not how that who works. Who says that? Say their name. Say J their for name. exchange rate. J for exchange rate. We, we like want to get someone and like their PR is answering whatever. And Jay's like, well, just send them a DM. I'm like, That's not how it works. They don't, yeah. like, they're just not going to be like, okay, girl, I'm coming. That's not how that works. Who is the most famous number you have in your phone? The most famous number? Yeah. Who is the most famous um, contact in your cell phone? Probably Leslie Jones. Work. Yeah. That's fierce. Who, what about you? Who do you have? I, th- I think yours is Whoopi. Whoopi is the most famous phone number I have, for sure. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, wait. No, Oprah. Oprah. I forgot Oprah. Oprah. Yeah. Monet, Oprah. shut the <laughs> bitch. You under literally no circumstances. Monet, look at me. Look at me. Look up at me. Literally, there's not a chance in hell. I'm going to show you. That you have Oprah's phone and, and, number. And, and and I'm gonna call her <laughs> on three way. You are you do not have Oprah's number. Do you know what time it is in Santa Barbara? I, what time is it? It's nine o'clock. She's not sleeping. Mona, you do not have when, when did you meet Oprah? Mona, you just put oh, you gosh. just typed you just typed Oprah into your phone. Mona, you just typed that into your phone. I did not. Are you, do you want me to call it or not? Are you, are you yes. nervous? Now you're scared. I'm not nervous. Now call over. Scared. We can drive down to Santa Barbara right. right now. Money, this is so stupid. I cannot. <laughs> oh, she's busy. She's on the phone. Money, you are so stupid. She's on the phone. <laughs> All right, let's try it one more time. Oh my gosh, she's on the phone! Woo! <laughs> hey, shut the fuck up. You're so stupid. Hello? Oprah? Oprah? It's. Mo- okay, 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 this is awkward. It's Oprah. Come out here. Yes, you are, girlfriend. Yes, you are, girl. <laughs> <laughs> You are so 
such an idiot. I can't even do it right now. No, but but I mean, and, and I, I I honestly, even though every time I've ever texted Whoopi Goldberg, she's responded and been very nice. I'm always nervous to do it every single time. Every yeah. single time. I'm also, um, do you know who has a lot of famous friends and they will hit people up, not give a, Todrick. Todrick oh. has all the, and Todrick will, Todrick does not give a, fl- a fuck and I love it. There's a video of Todrick Hall shoving a phone and Taylor Swift's face being like, do my, do my voicemail. <laughs> do, do my voicemail, bitch. Do my voicemail. <laughs> And then a camera film a camera filming him while he while he records her and is like this is gonna be content. <laughs> Before we leave, when did when did you when was the time you felt the most famous? In Brazil, Monet. There is nowhere Brazil. on God's green earth you will feel more famous than in Brazil. I've heard that from a lot of girls. It is. I mean, like New Yorkers, like Americans are like woo. And and Australians and 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 Europeans and uh, are kind of like it's Canadians. It's great to see you, but yeah. Brazilians, it's you're you're. It's, it's kind of like y'all know it's just me, right? <laughs> like it's just me. I've like, never. It's, it's just I've about never the drag been to South America. I don't know the feeling. It's wild. Like Brazil is bananas. It's so insane. That's the most famous I've but ever I, mean, I crowd dive. It wasn't my first time crowd diving. I I, I crowd surfed uh, maybe two or three times in my life. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a wild, it's a wild experience. Brazil is a crazy experience. There's been a lot of experiences and gigs where it's like a really nice hotel and they literally like treat you like a five star fucking like a Fabergé egg. They're like getting all your food and like, but I, and and now I'm spacing on them. There have been so many great ones. But a place I felt super famous was Israel. To Israel, they were pretty, like... They, like, treated me really, really, really nice. Like, I was fucking Beyonce. I'm trying to think of whenever I got treated the most, like, a goddamn... I mean, honestly, whenever Viacom does anything, they will send you a, a Suburban to pick you up at your house. This is true. I don't care if, if you were just going there for a meeting. They will send you a Suburban to pick you up yeah. every single time. So that's one of the things I really like about working with Viacom. I will say I did a Netflix show and they had me riding in a fucking fifteen passenger van with everybody. I was in there with the fucking PAs. <laughs> I was with the crew. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I had to do something. And not only that, sorry. I, and last thing I'll say, sorry. And, and I had to go to like Eighty Sixth Street to catch the bus. So it, the bus didn't come to my house. I had to go down to Eighty Sixth Street to get on this fucking fifteen passenger van with all my luggage. It was, and I just started taking Uber. I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to Uber all the way to fucking yeah. Westchester. And I was like, now I'm taking a $90 Uber to Westchester <laughs> <laughs> to and from. I'm spending 180 bucks just to get to and from work because I couldn't, it was insane. Was this before Drag Race? This was, this was on Tales of the City. Oh, got it. Um, uh. What was it? Oh, I did. I just did a gig for Netflix, and I mean, it's in a car. Well, I will say Netflix has very nice facilities. Like their fucking office space, it was very cute. Well, to be fair, at the time, I did not have great representation. My, I didn't have a great agent, so I didn't have anyone being like, "Oh, and uh, my client needs a car." They were just like, "Girl, right. whatever you send, we're signing." And I was like, "Well, you're my, <laughs> you're my agent, so I'm, I'm just gonna." Trust oh, this. You on this. Oh, I, I know exactly who it was. Ew! What a, ter- what a terrible fucking. Horrible agent. I'm not gonna drag this agent, but I will say this: they showed up to um, Angels in America to the to the to the, like the first opening night party drunk. drunk. Of course, I of was course. like, you know, I was like, every everyone's like, oh, this is my agent, and they're like, hi, I'm um, Steven Spinell's agent. I am a professional. I get my client in lots of different movies. Um, I he he's been in uh, big Broadway things. He has Tonys, and then I was like, that's my agent, like in the corner, drunk as hell. <laughs> I gagged, and then and then he had he got severed from my manager who introduced me with him. So he was like, "We well, don't work with him anymore." Girl. And then he was so then he would text me and be like, "Can you just send me my payments on Venmo?" <laughs> so I so me literally I was texting this nigga payments on Venmo. Who pays <laughs> their agent on Venmo? I was like, I need this to be a wrap. Like I cannot. Yes. 
And also on a gig that you did not get me a lot of money for. So on top of the fact that like I was getting barely any money from this gig because you did not advocate for me. And now I am right. sending you like literally like 40 bucks, $12. Yeah, that shit is too much. It's Girl, too much. It's too much. Wild. Anyway, so long story short, we are D plus celebrities. <laughs> should we should we should we contact Bravo and be like, you should bring back the show? It'll be my life on the D plus list with Bob and Monet. I mean, I will say this. I did get um listed as one of the uh, I, We're Here was on the, one of the top one hundred shows of twenty twenty. Oh work. Oh, that's fierce. Which is exciting. I mean, we were pretty high on the list. But we were still we we're on the list still. And I and I and I will say this: whenever there's a drag queen list, like top drag queens, I'm always in the top five, which feels nice. Same. I don't know if that's true. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so and, and HBO check out treats, the list. Check out the list and find out. And HBO treats me very nicely. I will say that HBO they treat us really nicely. <clears throat> Work. That's it. By the time that we um, bitch, we were at the the airport in um. Utah and Salt Lake City. You know this airport is shaped like a star. So like every yes. terminal, you have to leave one terminal, walk down the other yes. terminal. It's, wow. it's also one of the only airports with a Krispy Kreme. In case you're wondering, you need some little travel tips. There's a Krispy Kreme, I think in uh, in E. Anyway, in Terminal E, I think. And also, and also Chick Fil A. It's so oops. Anyway, oh, there's also if you go to Atlanta, Bojangles is in Terminal E. That is, Bitch. you need to know that. No, it's not Terminal. It's Terminal T. Is oh, that's right. You're right. T. You're right. T. Terminal T. I don't know. You're not even from Atlanta. You're not from. Oh, oh, oh God. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. You're not from Clayton actually, County. Actually, we don't. We don't need, well, you, <laughs> we see, you know, don't the airport that. actually is in Clayton County. Why are you talking? <laughs> but it's Terminal T. Is Bojangles. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. T. Yeah. Terminal T is Bojangles. Anyway, so I was. Um. Wait, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so so we're know. here. We 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 had landed in um Salt, in Lake, City. Salt Lake City, and when we got there, uh, this happened to me one time in life, only one time. But this, this someone met Shangela, uh, Mister, uh, and they called her. Uh, we're looking for Miss um, Miss Lewis. So it was like like Jennifer Lewis. It, it, I don't know if it was I don't know if it was a mix up or what. I can't to be okay. Let me be fair. I can't remember if they called her Miss Lewis or they said Mister Pierce. I can't remember. But they were like, we have a car to drive you to your next gate. So sometimes you go down and they'll they'll put you in like and it's always like a it's like a nice it's like a Mercedes or or something really nice. They'll drive you on the tarmac to the next gate. And then we were all like, me and the me and like the head of unscripted at HBO were like, oh, okay. So we just watched Shanta like, <laughs> and then we all just walked over to the gate, which was like a three minute walk, like <laughs> like it was not a journey. And then Shanta got there, we were like, hey, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> now one time I, I had a really close. I had okay, really y'all know Bob. Y'all know Bob made a scene. Y'all know this motherfucker very well. Bob probably did a whole stand-up routine about Shangela going from one terminal to the next in the car. It was probably a little, uh, uh, what you call it, a type ten, a type five of Bob <laughs> well, talking well, about. I was Angela. just laughing because every like the whole cast, like me, Eureka, uh, the head, that like the head of unscripted, like this uh, Nina, who's like a huge deal. Nina HBO. West. Not Nina West, oh my god. And we were all like, oh, that was odd. And I would say, the only time it happened to me, one time overseas, uh, a, a guy met me, he's like, he's like, Mr. Caldwell, hurry, we're going to get you to your next gate. Thank you for being a Delta Diamond. And they drove us, drove me over. One time. But sometimes, I, that now, that's something I've been wanting to do when I'm famous. I've been wanting to be a, because you know, so the fucking terminal for, for, for Delta at JFK is literally, from beginning to end, Patty and I looked at the thing, it's 2.2 miles long. So one time, we literally had to go from like the end which is like gate like 49 all the way to gate 25, which is at the other end. So, and we saw one of those little fucking golf carts. So we get to the thing, you're like, hey, we have a really tight connection and we just would really like, because your car is going this way, can we hop on so we can ride to the end? He's like, nah, man. And I was like, well, I'm Delta Diamond. He's like, I don't give a fuck about no Delta Diamond, man. He did not say that. He's, yes, Pat and I were gagged. This is a true story. And he was Southern for whatever reason. I was like, what the fuck are you doing in New York? Get the fuck out of here. Well, we, we, we Southerners are in, exist in New York. Ask Lady Bunny. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's from, you know, Lady Bunny from Chattanooga, Tennessee. That seems so strange. Why is that strange? She has a thick because Southern she, accent. <laughs> she, no, eh, I want to say thick. Anyway, you were saying, go ahead. I mean, but she's thick. 
Um, <laughs> Two and, and then, and then, yeah. So then he w- he literally would not take us to the thing. So Pan and I had to walk. But to be fair, his car didn't say Delta. You, you know, so you know what? New Yorkers are fucking rude. I was at the fucking Rite Aid today, and I walk in, and I was like, "Hey, can you tell me where your like glasses are?" She did not. She was packing thing on the aisle. She did not look at. I was. This is me standing here. I'm like, "Hey, can you tell me where um the glasses are?" Bitch, she did not wear eyes one time. It's 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 over there in aisle nine. And I was like, this is so I would always rude. say, if you want to experience the, the nastiest customer service, go to a Dwayne Reed. The closer you get to Midtown, the nastier their fucking attitudes. <laughs> and the closer you get to Midnight, the nastier their attitudes. Getting off of a gig at Lucky Chang's or any of the Hell's Kitchen bars and going to a Dwayne Reed afterwards was like, yeah, it would have been nice to be a celebrity then. Um, that's all I'm right. saying. All right, we got, we got to wrap yeah. it up, Monita. Anyway, I love you so much. I love you too, Juanita. It you, was a pleasure meeting you. I hope we get to work some more. I love you yeah. too, little Bill. Do you think that um that next uh do you th- <laughs> do you think that like w- are we gonna what if oh here's a final question, Monet? What happens if one of us gets like way more famous than the other one? Um, I don't know, Monet, Bob. I think that. that. <laughs> like, what happens if one of us? Be, what happens if one of us like? Beyonce's see here's the thing. Beyonce and Kelly, and Kelly is not quote as famous as Beyonce, but I think that Kelly is a massive star. Oh, one hundred percent, yeah. So what, what happens if one of us Beyonce is the other one Kelly's? I mean, I think whoever I think uh, my, if it was if it's me, I would bring you with me. But knowing how jealous of me you are, I don't think you would extend the same courtesy, and that's fine. You're right. I am incredible. I've always been jealous of you, um, and I'm glad that you that you saw through that. You see right through me. How you gonna do that shit? And on that note, thank you all for listening. Bye, everybody. Bye.